Hi everyone and welcome to our new video training package of Abacus. Abacus for beginners, a comprehensive and example-oriented package for all beginners to Abacus and finite element users. Let's look at its content in this 15 minutes demo. If you want to start analyzing your projects in Abacus, it is better to save your time by watching this demo and making your decision easier. Don't waste your time watching amateur and weak videos on YouTube. This package contains 8 lessons in more than 340 minutes and here I will present you the syllabus of each lesson and we can see some selected parts of them. In the first lesson you will learn what is CAE software like Abacus fundamentally and its related steps, pre-processing, processing, and post-processing. In addition, using units in Abacus simulations is presented in Lesson 1. Take a quick look at the content of the first lesson. We must first answer this question. What is CAE? With the advent of technology, the use of computers in solving problems and making various products has been expanded. Computer-aided design, analysis, and fabrications are divided into three parts, CAD, CAM, and CAE. CAE consists of three sections, pre-processing, processing, and post-processing. We will explain each of these three sections in following slides. We want to introduce the software environment window in full details. We see the menu bar, toolbar, and context bar at the top of the software screen. The toolbox area has different tools depending on each module. For example, you can see tools related to part modulus in the figure. Well, for example, here you see a hinge with a pin on it. You can see in the figure all necessary actions that must be done in each module. For example, in the part module, our model must be designed or imported. In the property module, material must be created and assigned to sections. In the, in the assembly environment, specify the position of the pin and the hinge relative to each other. An important issue in Abacus software is applying units in Abacus. Units are not specified in Abacus and you must comply with the compatibility of the units. By specifying the unit of three quantities like mass, length and time, the unit of the other quantities is determined based on their physical relation. You will know more about finite elements in Chapter 2 of this package. It is discussed how a finite element analysis will be done and how the software uses this theory. Degrees of freedom and some common elements in the finite element such as plane stress and plane strain are presented too. The validation discussion is done by convergence study and it is discussed in Chapter 2. Now let's look at the second lesson video. Let's take an example related to the simulation subject. Assume that the left side of the structure is fixed by these two holes and a force is applied to the bottom of right hole. And we want to calculate the amount of torque or stress in section AA. To do this, we can simplify this problem to a cantilever beam. How finite element works. First of all, our structure is divided into overlapping pieces, each of which is called an element. And each vertex of these elements is called a node. The second stage is that the behavior of each element will be formed. Its behavior is determined according to what type of element it is. There are different types of elements. Number one, one-dimensional. Number two, two-dimensional, such as triangular and rectangular element. Number three, three-dimensional, such as pyramidal element and rectangular cube. 
all elements are connected by nodes, so some nodes are common. Errors that can be done by the user include selecting element incorrectly, for example, use shell element where solid element is needed. Another thing is that the points related to the generating of the element are not observed. In the third chapter, you will get familiar with the types of elements available in Abacus. The beam element is used in this lesson and its types are introduced. We introduce characters and the degree uh, of freedom of each element type in this chapter. Let's look at the third lesson video. The properties of the elements include the following family, degrees of freedom, number of nodes, formulation, integration. Element family is actually the type of the element. Continuum element or three-dimensional element is for when we want to model a problem with real dimensions and size. Shell elements. In this element, the size of one dimension is much smaller than the other dimensions. We want to compare the displacement changes for a node at the end of the beam for all three analyses. To do this, select Tools, XY Data, Create from the main menu bar, then choose ODB Field Output. Select Unique Nodal as Position and then Choose U2, which is displacement in the Y direction. I hope you have enjoyed these lessons contents until now. There are more amazing lessons. Be ready to check the next contents. In Chapter 4, you will learn about the different types of analysis at Abacus. Analysis types depends on the type of solvers. For example, we introduce explicit and implicit solvers and explain their differences in problem solving using models and examples. Let's look at the fourth lesson video. The main differences between the two solvers can be divided into several categories. First, the element library, which Abacus standards support more element libraries than Abacus explicit. In fact, explicit solver has a subset of element libraries of the standard solver. Problems are divided into three categories, static, quasi-static, and dynamic. In static problems, sigma f is equal to zero. To examine whether our system is changing to dynamics, we need to examine the ratio of kinematic energy to internal energy. First, we save the results for each of these energies from the History Output section in the Results section. In Chapter 5, we will explain explicit analysis in Abacus. We will explain the methods of increasing the solution speed, including load rate scaling and mass scaling. Let's look at the fifth lesson video. Following tips are to increase the speed of solving quasi-static problems using the explicit solver. The first point is load rate scaling, which means loading in less time. The second point is mass scaling or increasing the mass of the model virtually. To get an estimate of the best loading rate, we must first perform a natural frequency analysis on the model to obtain the natural frequency. and increase the speed of quasi-static problem solving by load rate scaling method is 0.007. So in the next analysis, we put the solution time at 0.007. To conclude, we have three types of analysis. One with a solution time of 0.007, the main analysis model with a time of 0.5 and analysis with a time of 0.5, and mass scaling method. In Chapter 6, we will discuss linear analysis in Abacus software. 
We will thoroughly explain the features of these problems, how to use them, and the two most common types, buckle and frequency analysis, along with their, with their formulation. Okay, if you're ready, let's look at a small part of sixth lesson video. Abacus uses three methods to solve the eigenvalues problem and to obtain natural frequencies. These three methods are Lanxos subspace and automatic multi-level substructuring, which is abbreviated to AMS. The Lanxos method is a traditional method used for traditional structures, which is the software default. It has more general capabilities than other methods, but is slower than the AMS method. It is not worthy that this speed is less when we want to get a lot of eigenvalues. In this workshop, we are going to get the buckling load of an externally pressurized cylinder. This cylinder is a thin wall made of steel with a radius of 0.2 meters and a length of 3 meters. If we look at the solution process, we see that the analysis is being done correctly. The pressure for mode shape 1 is 1.83 MPa. In the next chapter, we will discuss heat transfer and thermomechanical analysis. There are several types of heat transfer problems, including coupled and decoupled. We will fully explain which type of heat transfer or which type of solver to use. We will also teach the adaptive meshing method used for significant distortion problems. Now it's time to check a short period of 7th lesson video. You see the types of situations where heat transfer can occur. The first case is conduction. Suppose we have a fixed beam on both sides that is affected by sunlight. In the couple sequence method, it is first assumed that there are no two supports and only deformation is caused by heat. In this section, we want to simulate heat transfer as a transient step on the same previous model. You see the constant values requires for this analysis. In this case, too, the, the goal is to find the temperature variation at E point. Now, we see the expected result. In steady state, we have a purple graph and in transient mode, we have a green graph. After meshing and submitting the model to solve, we see the results for the model. Parameters such as a stress, equivalent plastic strain and so on can be found for the model. Chapter 8 will talk about the simulation of composite materials, damage initiation and progressive damage. This chapter is part of the damage in composite package. Now let's look at final lesson video. The ply failure can occur due to fiber tension and fiber compression failure modes, matrix tension and matrix compression failure modes. For example, in a unidirectional composite, stretching in the direction of the fiber can lead to fiber rupture. E. Aussie t psi heel theory. The Aussie t psi heel failure theory is the same as the t psi heel theory except that the absolute value of the cross product term is taken. If you use a standard solver, it is recommended to use viscosity coefficients for convergence. The smaller the number of these coefficients, the more accurate the results. But convergence and solution speed will be affected. These numbers must be numbers between 10 to the negative power of 3 to 10 to the negative power of 6. If we want to see, for example, the stress changes in all layers in the thickness of the sheet at this point, it can be seen for the option X data and thickens. 
I hope you have got enough information about this package. But don't worry at all. If you have any questions about this tutorial, ask us via support at caeassistant.com. Our support is one of the main advantages of Abacus for Beginners package compared to other Abacus tutorials on the web. You can watch all lessons and when you are simulating your project, ask your question from our support and get their help. Take it easy to solve your projects in Abacus and enjoy it.